Hello everyone, I am PseudoAI, and today I'd like to share with you all a useful application for AutoGPT. Content creation can be a time-consuming venture. What if there was a way to speed up the process? Well, in this video, I will be demonstrating how to use AutoGPT to automate as much of the content creation process as possible using no extra plugins beyond the required OpenAI API key to use AutoGPT. Two main reasons for this. There are limited plugins for AutoGPT at the moment, and developing your own plugins is an extra hassle. Most users just want to have an easy plug-and-play experience, so this video is geared towards that type of user. The second reason, getting API keys for other external services for the most part requires additional subscriptions or fees. I want to present to you how you can use AutoGPT to aid in creating YouTube video content as cheaply as possible with the only cost due to the OpenAI API calls while keeping every other aspect free. This video is meant for the everyday user to get the most out of the base install of AutoGPT without doing any extra programming or setup, all for the lowest cost. After watching this video, you'll be able to create prompts to minimize the amount of API calls needed to create the content you need for your channel. Now with that preface out of the way, let's dive right in. First, a disclaimer. AutoGPT is an amazing tool, but it is still in development and is by no means perfect. Sometimes it will try to do commands that are not defined, or use commands that are defined but use them incorrectly. Other times it will fail to grab the information from a website, and it can even get sidetracked on a completely random topic. It struggles if given an extremely broad set of complex tasks, so it isn't yet at the level to be 100% automated, but it is still quite a useful tool. Our first step is rather obvious. Make sure you have AutoGPT installed on your computer. There are already many guides out there on YouTube for that purpose, so I won't be covering that here. So now, let's go make a YouTube video with AutoGPT. The premise of this generated video is simple. I want the AI to help me create a video discussing the latest news in machine learning and AI. After starting AutoGPT in the command prompt, your prompt with telling AutoGPT what to do. Now in version 0.3.0, which is the current stable version at the time of making this video, you have the capability to give it an end goal and it will create a bunch of intermediate goals itself. However, I found mixed results when using this simplified approach, so I still suggest doing it the original way of creating your own goals. To do this, type in dash dash manual and hit enter. You'll then be prompted to name your AI bot and describe your AI's purpose. And next, most importantly, you'll be able to give a set of goals for the AI to complete. I'm going to start with what not to do. You'll notice in this example, I am asking it to research news on AI and machine learning, pick the top five results and summarize them. From these results, write a YouTube video script, generate some images to provide some new visuals, and suggest some web-based tools to generate some free AI music and voiceovers. That is a lot of varied tasks and the results were not very spectacular. Mainly, the generated script for five topics was essentially a sentence per topic, not very interesting or detailed. It said it generated images, but without having an API set up for an image generator, it wrote nothing to the image file it created. About the only thing it did well on this attempt was to recommend some free AI tools we can use to create some voiceovers and music. More on that later in this video. The overall strategy to getting AutoGPT to make your YouTube content will be to split up all these tasks we need to get done in a more focused manner. Our first set of goals will be purely to create the video script. Subsequent goals will have a simple, clear objective as well. We will not generate a script, do images, voiceovers, music, all in a single prompt. AutoGPT has difficulty doing everything with a single prompt at this point in its development. Now let's begin with the script generation. Word choice is extremely important even when your overall directives are more focused. In this example, my goals are all in service of simply writing the video script. Please make special note of goal three in which I state the script should be written on the three stories incorporating any relevant statistics, examples, and insights. Sounds descriptive, doesn't it? Well, this is the script it generated. They are completely three random stories having nothing to do with the research I asked the AI bot to do. Up till now, I have shown you a snippet of the experiments I did to find out how to properly use AutoGPT and the main mistakes and issues I encountered. Now, I am going to teach you how to prompt AutoGPT properly. Let's go over each goal. The first goal is to conduct research on the most recent news in AI and machine learning. What this will do is prompt the AI to do a bunch of Google searches for the information we need. Second goal asks the AI to pick the top story and read the entire article and summarize. Notice that when asking the AI to read the entire article, it generally added more information to its summary. The next goal is very important. I am asking the AI to follow up and perform additional searches on the chosen topic and summarize those as well. We need to get as much information as possible and simply conducting the initial Google search in 
my previous prompts was not enough. The last goal is to create a GPT agent using the GPT 3.5 model to write a YouTube script based on the summary results and shut down when finished to save on API calls it uses. This phrase is important as recall when I asked the AI to write a script based on the three stories, it had no idea I was referring to the stories I had asked it to research. This is more explicit phrasing. Also note, I did not ask the AI to write the summaries to file as I did previously. This is because I found that when it did this, it generally had trouble using some of its defined commands, especially with hyperlinks. Instead, having it store the information in local memory generally produced better results. In general, you want to be descriptive, focused, and explicit in your directions. Don't just assume it will read the entire article, state it. Have it conduct additional research beyond the original inquiry, and having every intermediate step write the information to file can sometimes cause issues, instead allocate the information to local memory. Here is the first part of our content creation completed, the finished script. Now that we have ourselves a script, recall that AutoGPT had recommended some free AI voiceovers for our automated video. Well, I've got some good news and bad news. Most are free, but only for a single use or limited trial period. Eleven Labs is a solid free choice as you get 10,000 free characters of text per month, and you can even obtain an API key with a free account. But AutoGPT currently lacks the built-in Python command to automate this procedure, which is outside the scope of our goal for making this video without using any additional coding or setup. If you do all want to see that in a future video, let me know in the comments section below. As we are sticking to the low, low cost of free for everything outside of GPT, I'm going to show you all a couple of the more generous AI-generated voice voiceovers for limited uses and also a more long-term solution. Welcome to Voice Booking, a voice generation website in which you can input some text like our generated script and generate an AI voice to speak it. Simply copy and paste our text and if you notice in the bottom right where it says a thousand out of a thousand, we have hit a character limit unfortunately. Not to worry, I'll show you another approach after this to generate the rest, but for now we are going to generate the audio for the first part of our script here. What is nice about this tool is that we can implement several effects if we so wish on our audio. For example, on the emphasis tab, we can highlight a word if we want to place more or less emphasis on it. Fortunately, the AI script writer was generous enough to put quotes around words of emphasis. So let's do what it intended. We can pick the level of emphasis on the top and then highlight a word or multiple words to apply the effect. Let's proceed to do this on the rest of the words and quotes, and then we'll listen to the effect emphasis has on our audio. Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we will be discussing the recent news of Dr. Jeffrey Hinton quitting Google due to concerns about the flood of misinformation, the possibility of AI appending the job market, and the existential risk posed by the creation of true digital intelligence. Nice! Another thing we can do is change the voice itself. Under the voice tab, we can select a different voice from the drop-down menu on the right. Then we can highlight a portion of the text and listen to a snippet of the text so we can just get a small sampling. Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel. 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 From the left drop down menu, we can even choose an accent. By default, it is a British accent, but we can change that to whatever we like. Back on the right side, our voiceovers have changed with the new accent, so we can again pick the voice to our liking. Once you are satisfied with your creation, name your project and download. To add a talking avatar to our video, we can even make our way over to D1D with our script in tow. Again, it goes without saying, it is possible to automate this as well if you are willing to pay for a subscription, get an API key, oh, and also create your own plugin on top of that, as I do not think there is currently a plugin for this service in the AutoGPT plugin repo. Alas, we will go the manual route here and use our GPT script. We can choose a presenter, use a generated AI presenter, or even generate our own presenter by writing in a description which you could have AutoGPT create for you. Another option is you can use your own images, even AI generated ones. So if we head back over to Bing, we can generate our own images, save those, and load them into D1D. Using these generated avatars, we can now create our animated avatar. Because we are using the free version, we are limited to 20 generations and can only generate 20 words for each one. So we'll have to cut our script down, choose our voice and style, name the video, and generate. Because of the 20 word cap, we can either do different avatars and voices for each segment, or we can use the same avatar and voice combination if we want a bit more consistent 
consistency in our video. Since the free version of 11 Labs has a character limit and the other free options have limits to the number of uses, what is a viable long-term option? Well, look no further than surprisingly, Microsoft Edge. See, it can be useful after all. By clicking on the read allowed this page button, it will read all the contents on the page. If we go over to voice options, we can even choose the speaker speed and a voice with different accents. So how is this useful to us? We want audio for our script, not the Edge homepage. Simply create a text file of your script and drag and drop it into the browser. Now pressing the same button will read our script instead and all we need to do is record the audio. He believes that if we continue on this path, we may reach a point where AI becomes so intelligent that it is no longer under human control. It is now time to revisit AutoGPT as we need some images for our video as it would be pretty boring video with only audio. Since we are going the free route and do not have any API keys for any image generators, we'll do the next best thing of using AutoGPT to create our prompts for a free text to image AI generator. A pretty good free one is Microsoft Bing, so we'll have AutoGPT create some prompts for us to put in there. First thing we are going to do is create a text file that contains a basic format for what a successful prompt looks like. This is a general approach no matter what image generator you use, so you can get a format from AutoGPT that is usable. The file should be placed in your AutoGPT workspace. Now let's take a look at my goals for this AI. The first is having it read our new script text file and the prompt examples text file I just displayed all in the same workspace directory. Then I will have it create a GPT agent to write three detailed image prompts using the information from the script and the format of the examples to generate high quality images in the B Microsoft Bing image creator. For the last goal, I have it validate that the written prompts are related to the script and to iterate on the prompts as needed to ensure they are relevant. So after we execute and let AutoGPT run wild, we arrive at our initial prompts. The first has something to do with autonomous cars. The second image has some relevance to the script as it has robots and humans working together in an office setting. The last prompt has something to do with astronauts exploring a distant planet. Well, one out of three. This is why our third goal is extremely important. We can't just trust that AutoGPT won't make a mistake so we need to validate that our prompt is related to the script. So it does just that. It rereads the script and compares to the prompts. Because of the discrepancy, it rewrites the prompts and comes up with the new prompts here. It subsequently validates once more and satisfied with its comparison, AutoGPT shuts down. Without this validation step, you'll get gems like this. So when creating your own prompts, make sure you include this important goal. Using our generated prompts, we head over to Bing and input each one one by one. Even though the prompt could probably use some more optimization and are a bit wordy, the results we get are pretty decent for the little work we put into this. Adding more examples to that text file and giving better prompt instructions will lead to better results, but these images are certainly good for the purposes of this demonstration. Still images are kind of boring, how about we add some motion to them? If you head over to Leapix, you can drag and drop your images and immediately start editing. You can adjust the animation length, the style, how much motion, the point of focus of that motion, and you can even blur the edges of objects with edge distortion. If you really want to fine tune your options, you can click on the advanced editor and explore its capabilities. When complete, simply click on the share and save as an MP4 or your file or format of choice. So we've got our audio, we've got some visuals. Now we need to cap our video off with some music. We'll employ a similar strategy in AutoGPT that we did for the image prompts using a great free music AI generator called Beatbot. Like we did with the images, I'm going to create some sample prompts in a text file and have it read it in. Our goals read very similar to the image task. Again, we read the script in example prompt text files, have it generate the prompts using the details of the script and the style of the prompt, and last but most important, to validate our prompts against the script. For this type of generation, this prompt setup seems to do very well, so I'll let it do its thing and voila! The six music prompts we asked for, which are relevant to our script, perfect. Next, we need to navigate over to Beatbot and copy and paste our prompts into the box and click generate. This generator is free and can only make about 10 second music clips, but it has unlimited uses. Plus, we have the option to generate music without vocals. And even if we do have vocals, we can download just the instrumental part of the track. And generally, can download the little video it makes, the pure audio, or the instrumental audio. Congratulations, we now have all the pieces of our video, time to put it together. And here is the finished product. Misinformation runs rampant, the truth is hard to find. Artificial intelligence, rise of a digital mind. Joffrey Hinton's warnings, the world turned upside down. Jobs evaporating, the future we have found. Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. In today's video,
He will be discussing the recent news. He has warned that AI chatbots could become more intelligent than humans and could be exploited by bad actors. Of Dr. Jeffrey Hinton quitting Google due to concerns about the flood of misinformation, the possibility of AI appending the AI appending the job market and the existential risk posed by the creation of true digital intelligence. This is because AI is becoming increasingly sophisticated and it can perform tasks that were once only possible for humans. Furthermore, Dr. Hinton has highlighted the existential risk posed by the creation of true digital intelligence. We continue on this path. We may reach a point where AI becomes so intelligent that it is no longer under human control. This is a worrying prospect, and it is something that we need to take seriously. In conclusion, Dr. Jeffrey Hinton's concerns about the flood of misinformation, the possibility of AI appending the job market, and the existential risks posed by the creation of true digital intelligence are valid and should not be ignored for the greater good and not for nefarious purposes. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more AI and machine learning news. Robots replacing workers, what's the future of mankind? Simple, right? Well, figuring out the proper AutoGPT prompts took a bit of time and not too much money. I spent around $1.20 for the entire project, but that can be drastically reduced for a subsequent project now that I won't waste nearly as many API calls on experimentation. If you exclude all the mistakes I made learning how to use AutoGPT, I probably spent only around 15 cents on the actual video. Not a bad investment for automating as much of the process as possible, saving me a buttload of time in researching script writing, recording, creating the visual content, and music. Now certainly if you are willing to pay more and possibly develop some of your own plugins, this can be even more automated. And as AutoGPT is further developed and becomes more mature, we shall see more improvements in its automation of complex tasks such as video content creation. While it can't fully do the entire process yet, it is pretty impressive how much it could do for us this early on in its development cycle. I hope you have all taken away some key insights from this video and can go forth and make your own video content Content using this approach. Thanks for watching everyone. Please like and subscribe and stay curious my friends. See you all in the next video.